It's almost like he's in pain. We're just there. We're, we can't help him. We're just... All we can do is watch him. Agent Scully, FBI. Wait a minute. That's the lady one. I'm not a lady person. I'm a, I'm a guy person. Sorry. Agent Mulder, FBI. Shit. God damn it, I dropped it. Anyway, um, I'm an F I'm FBI. Uh, is the point. I'm not. But anyway, hi. Neo true crime. This is the story of the Allagash abductions. Viewer discretion is advised. What am I doing with my hands? What is this? How's that related to aliens? It's not. It's not. And the voice? I'm sorry. Okay. So I remember seeing this story on Unsolved Mysteries back when I was a kid. And I remember I specifically saw this one for the first time when I was home alone and I had nightmares uh, for days after seeing this story. I'm a believer in aliens, just like Agent Mulder. I believe there's little green, gray, purple, they can be whatever color they want to. Men, women out there floating around in the sky in their little spaceships. I think it's real, absolutely. We can't just sit here and say, oh, it's just us guys. We're the only ones in the entirety of space we're the only living beings. How stupid is that? If we exist, how come they can't exist? But are alien abductions real? Do you believe in them? What about UFO sightings that have been spotted for decades? Do you believe it? Do you believe that aliens have come to our planet and have just floated around in the sky for whatever reason, I guess, to research us and they're like mm, god jesus they're still that way we'll come back in a couple more decades and see if they're normal we won't be but how come aliens only ever seem to abduct like hillbillies like what is that because that's not the best that humanity can provide but they they always go for for them no no offense if you're a hillbilly i enjoy hillbillies very much it's just you're not the brightest not the brightest crayons in the box you know what i mean what are aliens getting from them how to Cut up a rabbit and eat it? Like, I don't even know what hillbillies do. How to sleep with their own sisters? I don't know. Anyway, I'm off topic. No, I'm not. This is the topic. But this story is called the Allagash 4, or the Allagash, that's a hard word to say, the Allagash Abductions. Uh, and this took place in the Allagash Wilderness Mountains uh, in Maine. And it happened to four men, four friends. It was August of 1976. Twin brothers, Jack and Jim Wiener. Yes, that's their last name. T he he. And their chums, their buds, Chuck Rack and Charlie Foltz. Well, they said, guess what? We're going to go on a two week long excursion into the wilderness. We're going to go camping. We're going to hike. We're going to go fishing. We're going to do all the stuff that rugged men are supposed to do out here in the wilderness. And it was going to be a long trip. I don't know about you, but I can't even last one night camping. I need to go home because I can't binge watch old episodes of the show 24 in the wilderness. That's just rude. So the four men set out and they bring along all of their gear. And about two nights into this wilderness trip, one of them spots a ball of light just sort of fluttering in the sky above the lake. They said that it was there for about 30 seconds and then gone, just poofed into thin air. It just literally zipped out of the sky. Then a couple of nights later, they go out on their canoe and they go into the lake and they're gonna do some night fishing. Once again, they see this big bright ball of light just appear out of nowhere above the lake. And this time it appears to be much closer than the one they saw the couple of nights prior. Apparently, and by the way, most of the photos I'm showing of the images you're seeing of them on the lake or at the campsite, the recreations from Unsolved Mysteries, these aren't actual photos of them, except for the, there is a photo I'm showing of the four of them. That one's real, but you, you, you'll understand, you'll get it, you'll see it. But one of these men decided to take their flashlights and try to signal uh, SOS with it to this ball of light. And I guess the ball of light appeared to respond in some way. 
And then all of a sudden, it shot out this big beam of bright light right at them. And then this object was then appeared to have been now following them. And it was like getting closer and closer. So they say they begin to paddle like crazy and they're like their paddles and their hands in the water. They're trying to run away from this freaking ball of light that's now chasing them. And they're hoping they could escape it because they don't know what the hell it is. Then they say the next thing they remember is they're just suddenly back on the beach. The canoe is now on the on the actual beach and they're kind of just sitting there in a daze and they they look up and they see the ball of light and it's just hovering there and then it just begins to back away and it disappears now what it felt like to them was that they made it to the shore within seconds of seeing this ball of light and nothing happened from it but what they noticed was because before they left to go into the canoe because it's absolutely pitch dark in this part of the wilderness they lit a bonfire, a very large bonfire that should have lasted realistically between three to five hours long. And they, when they got back, when they went out to the out on the lake and they finally paddled back after being chased by the ball of light, they said it only felt like maybe, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. But the bonfire was done. It was completely like fizzled out. And they were like, well, how can that be? We've only been gone for less than an hour. But they didn't really think much of it. And this sort of, they said they all began to feel really, really fatigued and tired and kind of sore for whatever reason. And so they just all went to bed. Then they spent the next six or seven days continuing on their wilderness trip, hiking and camping and fishing. And then that was it. They went home. The men would tell their families and their friends like, hey, we saw this really strange thing, this ball of light. Maybe it was a UFO. We don't really know. And it kind of was just there and it disappeared. And some of their friends and family were like, I assure you did, champ. And some of them believed them. Some of them didn't. In 1988, Jack and Jim Wiener, the two of them began to have these very vivid nightmares, uh, very just unsettling nightmares. And at first they were kind of having these dreams separately, but never really discussing it. But then one of them started to talk about these nightmares or dreams they're having. Then the other brother said, oh my God, I'm having the same ones. These nightmares were of the brothers and their two friends sitting in this big, bright white room, sitting on a bench. The, all four of these men were naked and Jim and Jack can recall feeling these nightmares, making them feel very fearful, very scared. And they began to wonder to themselves, did something else happen there in the Allagash wilderness? When we were in that canoe, then suddenly back on the beach and the fire was out, how, you know, it should have been lasting four to four to five hours or so. How did that happen? Did we lose time? Did something happen? And they believe that the ball of light they saw was a UFO. And so one of the brothers contacted a, I guess this renowned UFO researcher named Ray Fowler. And at first they just wanted to talk to him to discuss what they saw and if these nightmares meant anything. So after several discussions with Ray Fowler, Ray Fowler was like, well, why don't we put you guys under hypnosis and we can see if you can recall anything, any kind of buried memories perhaps. And the four men, all four men actually agreed to do this hypnosis. They would all do it individually. So the thing is, is that all four of them were asked not to discuss any of the stuff that they uncovered in their own hypnosis session. Uh, and they promised that they wouldn't tell each other what they said. So that way you're not like cross contaminating stories. They promised to do so, but if they actually did or not, it's not known. So, what you are about to hear, let me say this like Robert Stack would say it. <clears throat> what you are about to hear is the actual, that's not Robert Stack at all, I'm sorry. That was just, rest in peace, Robert, I didn't mean to butcher your voice. What you're about to hear is some excerpts, excerpts, experts, eggs, excerpt, excerpts, excerpts, egg, Excalibur, X marks the spot, X. X go and give it to X Xer expert excerpts. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. These are snippets, segments, if you will, of the actual hypnosis session. So what the voices you are hearing are the voices of the four men, each of them recounting their memories from what happened that particular night. These are the things I remember when I was watching this episode as a kid. This audio is what really scared me the most. And it's for this, even to this day, it's, it's just very unsettling. But here is that audio. They, 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 they don't know what to do. I think they think I'm going to come after them. I feel 
like I want to. I feel like I want to. The first one that comes near me, I'm going to throttle him. That's what I want to do is throttle him. I don't like these things. I don't care where they come from. They shouldn't be doing this to people. They're right there. Their face is right in my face. I don't know why. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what they want. Oh, they're saying things. They're explaining things with their eyes in my head. They're saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We won't harm you. They say, do what we say. Just do what we say. I'm afraid that it's like a doctor's office. I hate that. It's cold like a doctor's office. It's cold. They put the panel over your chest. And then they scrape your arms your chest, your legs, your thighs. <laughs> we shouldn't be here. I just keep thinking I want to be back in the canoe. See some sort of device on him. They've got a, it looks like a silvery. It looks like the, like it's got curves on it. It's almost like, like it sucks something. He's got his head tipped way back. It's almost like he's in pain. We're just there. We're, we can't help him. We're just... All we can do is watch him. So each man, um, under their own separate hypnosis session, they each recalled a horrifying, terrifying abduction experience and being aboard some kind of alien craft and being experimented on. The thing is, is that each man would end up recounting virtually the same story. I mean, there were differences between each four based on their points of view, but the story, overall story, was the same. And again, they promised or they said they would not discuss with each other what they went through with hypnosis before all four of them had gone through it. Whether they did or not, again, I can't say. But the if they didn't, the stories with this uncanny kind of similarities, it's pretty alarming. They recounted how they were abducted and how they were probed. These aliens took samples of the men's skin, of their blood. They took various other body fluids. One of them remembers how the aliens' faces were absolutely horrifying. They were like stuff of nightmares. And that now that he remembered them in this hypnosis session, it's like, it's like now he can't get it out of his head. But according to them, the aliens communicated in some way saying, don't be afraid of us. Just do what do what we tell you to do. Do what we say. One of them remembers that the this operation room or whatever, it felt like a doctor's office. That one of these or these group of aliens would take this like panel and scrape it along their chests, I guess, to take skin and hair samples. One of them recalls that a device these aliens used was this metal curved type device. And one guy, one of the guys saw what was happening to the other guy. And he said it looked like he, the one going through this particular procedure with this metal thing, looked like he was in a lot of pain and discomfort. Now, all four men also took polygraph tests and all four of them passed those polygraph tests with flying colors. Again, take it with a grain of salt because lie detectors aren't always the most accurate thing. But they were asked, like, how, you know, did you guys speak to one another about your stories ahead of time? Did you guys concoct this story? They asked some questions like that in the polygraph and they all were telling the truth. I guess there is a, a Dr. William Cole, who was a, a well-known skeptic of this type of thing, at least back then. He would say that the story that these four men uh, were, was giving was just a bunch of science fiction. It was hocus pocus. It wasn't real. That their what they were what they were explaining through their hypnosis 
is that they were just recalling scenes they had seen from like alien movies because you know movies from like the 50s and 60s with alien abduction and you know aliens traveling to earth and all that that they were giving descriptions in these hypnosis sessions that sounded very similar to scenes in these movies. Not to mention that there are were several books that you could read about alien abductions back then and that that's likely where they got these stories from. However, uh, for the longest time, all four men said, what we experienced is what we experienced. Uh, it's all true. We didn't, we didn't lie. This was real. We swear up and down this happened to us. So in 2016, there was, I guess, an interview done to one of these men, Chuck Rack. And he said in this interview in 2016 that the entire thing was a hoax that he just went along with this story because of financial reasons. It's like he was, you know, earning money off of this. However, he is the only one, as far as I can tell, who has ever come forward to say that it was a hoax or that they faked it. Admittedly, I have not read the book on this case because I think it was Dr. Fowler who wrote a book called The Allagash Abductions with regards to his experience with the four men. So in this book, from what I understand, there is some detail that Chuck Rack was the only one of the four men who had issues with the hypnosis sessions. As in, he didn't take to it as well. He wasn't able to recall much information at all from what the experience was. And that the other three men were able to be hypnotized really easily, very quickly, and they were able to recall a lot of information, whereas Chuck Rack just wasn't able to. He did not respond super well to the hypnosis. And according to the book, Chuck Rack was disappointed by his inability to go deep under to remember more information. He was upset. And this is something I guess he struggled with for some time. And Chuck Rack also had read books about alien abductions and fictional stories about aliens and whatnot. And he said he received the most pressure from people with regards to coming from the skeptics. He received the most pressure. And I think it's because people found out that he had read books about this type of stuff. And he was being accused more directly about faking these stories than the other three. So in 2016, when he came out that interviewed and said like, uh, you know, this was a hoax, there is a possibility he may have just been saying that just to distance himself from the story altogether. And just so he's not like being scrutinized anymore. But like I said, the other three men reportedly have never come forward to state that this was fake. As far as I can tell, those three men still stand by their story and say, this is what actually happened. The truth of the matter is, is we'll never really know unless all four of them come out and say, all right, we did plan this. We wrote this whole thing up. This was all fake. Uh, but what was the, what would the reasons be? Like, how would they even start coming up with the story? Like, hey, let's go out to the Allagash and then eh, let's just pretend we got abducted by aliens. One thing to note, though, is that Chuck Rack, even though he did say that the abduction part was fake, he did say that the f all four of them did see some very strange balls of light in the sky over the Allagash. He said that was not a lie. He said that was absolutely true. What they saw was real. So that's another thing to give like, okay, well then maybe they were abducted. I don't know. I have just always been fascinated by stories like this because there's always that mystery behind it. We're never gonna really know the truth. And honestly, I don't want to. I like these stories just as they are. I don't wanna find out that they're fake. I don't even wanna find out necessarily that they're true. I just think they're really interesting stories. They're entertaining at the very least. But if it was real, obviously it's horrible what they went through. Again, you know, I believe in this stuff. You may not. So you may think the whole thing is just a big ha ha joke and that's fine. But I don't know. I, I, I believe in aliens. I always have a hard time with the abduction part. Why are they abducting us? What do they want to know from us? What are we going to give them? But what do you guys believe? Do you think that the Allagash 4 were being legitimate? That they were telling a truthful story? Were they abducted? Or were they lying through their teeth just to get some money? And why were they lying? What was the point? But at the very least, just a very interesting story. So if you ever find yourself out in the Allagash wilderness on a canoe in the middle of a lake, look up. You might see a ball of light who will suck you up into their ship and put metal things up your buttholes. For whatever reason, I never understood the probing. I just don't get it. Some people like it. Some people don't. Some people love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not me. Anyway, that is it for this video, true crime 
true alien nerds, true abductors. I don't even know what you guys would be called in this one. That's it. That's the video, okay? So anyway, if you're new here, hello, I'm Mike. Normally I tell true crime stories. I'm just taking a little bit of a skosh of a break from true crime because it's, you know, hitting the old noggin pretty hard. Um, I'll be back to that soon. But yeah, I sometimes occasionally will tell stories like this. So feel free to subscribe if you like this kind of stuff and true crime. Follow me over on TikTok. I have two pages. The links to those pages come up here in the beginning and at the end of the video up in this corner. They're also linked in the link tree below, in the description below. Also, my merch store is in that link tree in the description below. Uh, recommend a true crime case to my email. My email is listed below if you want to. Or recommend a case like this, aliens or ghosts or haunted places or whatever. And I will add that to my list. I pick my cases and stuff at random. My light's blinking at me. It's about to die, so that's why I'm trying to rush this. Anyway, just have fun. Have a great day. Or night, or morning, whatever time it is for you. And don't get abducted by aliens. Cause, and if you do, if you get probed, you might like it. You might like it. You just... You never know until you try. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Okay. No, take that back. Sorry, that was creepy.